We are going to study the book with the title Introduction to Thermodynamics of Irreversible Processes, written by Ilya Prigozhin. Now, Prigozhin won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1977, specifically for the material which is contained within this book. So if you want to win a Nobel Prize, it's a good idea to study this book to find out exactly what is involved. Irreversible processes are almost all the processes which are occurring on the surface of our Earth, and also all those processes which are occurring in the entire universe. So this material in this book has a very wide range of applications, and if you study it carefully, you will find that it will be very useful to you in your career. We begin with chapter one of the book of Prigozhin, which is titled Conservation of Mass. And we will be considering the conservation of mass in three different types of thermodynamic systems, isolated, closed, and open systems. So first we have to assume that we begin with a well-defined geometry which describes the system. For example, in this image on the right, these echospheres. So the surface of the sphere would define the boundary of the geometry. And we also assume that the system is macroscopic. That means it contains at least 10 to the 23 particles. Normal thermodynamics really only applies in the macroscopic limit which is called the thermodynamic limit, that is when you have a large size system. When you get to very small systems, for example, like nanoclusters, you are going to have a problem with the application of thermodynamics to that system, as we have already seen in the case of negative specific heat in nanoparticles, which is just a result of the fact that these thermodynamic laws do not apply in small systems. We require the thermodynamic limit, which assumes that we have on the order of 10 to the 23 particles. So we begin with the first system, which is called an isolated system. In this system, there is no exchange of energy, nor matter, nor work. So the system is really isolated. The second thermodynamic system will be called a closed system. And in this system, there is energy exchange, but no matter is exchanged and no work is exchanged. So this is an example, for example, the uh, echospheres that you can't do work on the system because the boundary is very solid. And there's no interchange of matter because you have to go through glass, which is impossible. So the only thing exchanged with this system is heat in these echospheres, in the image on the upper right. The third system is known as an open system. And this is the case of a really open system. It's open to everything, to energy, to matter, and to work. We can do work on the system. And this is basically what living systems are. They are open systems. So they have to be treated somewhat differently from closed systems or from isolated systems. So now, to test your understanding, I can ask you, for example, what type of thermodynamic system is the planet Earth? And what type of thermodynamic system is the universe? So try to answer these on your own, and then we can discuss them the next day in class. Now, in classical thermodynamics, that is the thermodynamics which most of you must have taken some amount of uh, material, classical thermodynamics normally deals only with isolated and closed systems, but not open systems. So therefore, for open systems, we have to invent a new formalism, and that is the formalism of irreversible thermodynamics, which we'll be studying in this book. And these open systems are particularly important in meteorology and in biology. 
So now I would like you to give an example of a living biological system which is closed. And that again we are going to discuss in class the following day. And uh, also within the same question, ask yourself, are there irreversible processes occurring in this closed biological system? Now we will discuss the thermodynamic variables or properties of a system. There are two kinds. The first are called extensive properties or variables. And these are defined by the system as a whole. For example, the energy, E, the volume, V, and the number of moles, N. Now these are called extensive because they are additive which means that the total energy of the system is the sum of the energy in each of its parts. The same with the volume, and the same with the number of moles. The number of moles is the number of particles, in other words. So the sum, the total, is the sum of the individual particles in each part of the system. So these are added, additive variables. There are also what are called intensive properties. And these take on well-defined values at each point in the system. For example, the temperature, the pressure, and the chemical potential. So normally, these variables have only one value. For example, when the system is in equilibrium, the temperature throughout the system is constant and the same. And the pressure is also constant and same as well as the chemical potential. So these are variables, intensive variables or intensive properties which take on well-defined values at each point within the system. So now thermodynamic systems can be described by what is called a fundamental relation. And this fundamental relation tells us everything we need to know about the thermodynamic system at least on the macroscopic level. So the two different fundamental relations are the entropy relation, for example, S the entropy, <clears throat> which is a function of the energy, the volume, and the number of moles, or the number of particles in the system. Or we can have also the energy representation, E, which is then a function of the entropy, the volume, the number of moles, or the number of particles in the system. So now we come to a very important equation in thermodynamics, which is known as the Gibbs equation. So in this Gibbs equation, we take the entropy representation, that is, the equation in which the entropy is a function of the energy, the volume, the number of moles, and then we just expand it out. So, for example, ds, that means the infinitesimal change in the entropy, is just equal to the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to the energy at constant volume and number of moles times dE, the infinitesimal change in the energy, plus the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to the volume at constant energy and number of moles times dV, which is the infinitesimal change in the volume, <coughs> plus the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to the number of moles at constant energy and constant volume times dN, which is the infinitesimal variation of the number of moles. And uh, now we can make the association. We can say that partial S by partial E, the first term here, we assign that to the variable 1 over T. And T will become the temperature. So that is just an uh, assignment. So we have then the first term being 1 over T times DE. And the second term, which is partial S, the entropy with respect to partial V, the volume, we define it as being the pressure over the temperature. Okay, so the second term becomes P over T 
times dv and then we define partial s by partial n the number of moles to be minus mu over t where mu is going to be what is known as the chemical potential so these are the definitions in fact of the temperature the pressure and the chemical potential so for example if somebody asks you what is the meaning of temperature you can say that well 1 over t is just how the entropy changes with respect to the energy in the system at constant volume and number of moles and if they ask you what is the pressure what what the pressure means you can say p over t pressure over temperature is just the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to the number of moles in the system at constant uh, sorry with respect to the volume at constant energy and constant number of moles and the same for the chemical potential what is the chemical potential well the chemical potential over the temperature is just minus the variation of the entropy with respect to the number of moles in the system at constant energy and constant volume so now we come to the conservation of mass in closed thermodynamic systems so we assume we have a closed system containing C a number C different components and the indices can go from gamma equal to 1 to C so for example there could be different chemical components in the system now because it is a closed system no mass can enter or leave the system so the only variation in the masses in the system of these components these chemical components would be due to the changes in the components because of chemical reactions which are occurring within the system so for example the change of mass of substance gamma dm gamma of component gamma in for example a time interval dt is just dm gamma equal to this mu which is stoichiometric coefficient times big M which is the molar mass of substance gamma that means how many grams is contained uh, one mole is equivalent to how many grams of the substance gamma and times dg which is infinitesimal change in the extent of the reaction dg is the extent that means how far the reaction has proceeded and we'll discuss a little bit more about that in a second so mu at gamma is the stoichiometric coefficient we'll see that within what what this refers to an example in just a minute but it's positive when the component gamma appears on the right of the reaction and negative when it appears on the left big M gamma of course is the molar mass as I just explained and d chi or chi is the degree of advancement or extent of the reaction so let's take an example to explain these terms so this reaction is molecule of nitrogen plus three molecules of hydrogen go to two molecules of ammonia NH3 so therefore by equation one we can write that the change in the mass of nitrogen EMN2 divided by minus and it's a minus now because the stoichiometric coefficient is the coefficient of nitrogen in this equation reaction 2 and you see the coefficient is 1 in that case so it's minus 1 times the molar mass of nitrogen and that has to be equal to dmh2 which is the change in the mass 
of hydrogen and it's divided by minus 3 because stoichiometric coefficient is 3 in the equation 2 for hydrogen and it's a minus because it appears on the left hand side of the equation and that is equal to minus dm of ammonia which is the change in mass of ammonia divided by 2 because the stoichiometric coefficient for ammonia in equation 2 is 2 times the molar mass of ammonia and that is equal to dg and all of that comes out from equation 1 so this equation, equation 3, is really a definition of dg that is the, ex the change in the advancement or extent of the reaction now the total mass of the system is just the sum of all the components within the system all of their masses m gamma and if we now consider that we have a closed system so there's no input or output of these components to the system and so the only changes which are occurring within the system are due to the chemical reactions then so we can write the principle of the conservation of mass for a closed system dm is just equal to the sum of mu gamma m big m the molar mass of substance gamma times dg and this comes out by using equation one in uh, this equation for the total mass of the system and taking the change dm the infinitesimal change in the total mass of, of the system and that has to be equal to zero because there is no change in the total mass of the system we are assuming that we have a closed system so there's no input or output of masses so the change dm has to be equal to zero equation four so then independently of how far advanced the reaction is uh, we have equation five being valid which is known as the stoichiometric equation so this is an equation which appears uh, for all chemical reactions it has to be valid at any point in the extent of the reaction so just remember that this is called the stoichiometric equation equation 5 because we will refer back to it later in the course it is often useful to consider the number of moles of a substance rather than working with its actual mass so the number of moles of a substance is just its mass over the molar mass which is the mass of one mole of that substance so then using this equation we can write equation one in the form of equation six where d and gamma the infinitesimal change of the number of moles of substance gamma is just equal to nu gamma which is the stoichiometric coefficient of that substance gamma times dg which is the infinitesimal change in the reaction or the extent of the reaction g the chemical reaction rate the rate of the reaction or the velocity of the reaction is just v and that's identical to dg by dt so that is the rate of the reaction so therefore the change in the number of moles of substance gamma is just dn gamma by dt which is equal to nu gamma stoichiometric coefficient of substance gamma times v the rate or the velocity of the reaction now for the case of not only one reaction occurring within the system let's say that we have a number r of simultaneous reactions rho each one uh, with the indice rho then we can write equation one of the previous slide in this form dm gamma is just equal to the molar mass of substance gamma times the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients for that substance gamma and for that reaction rho we have rho going from one to r times dg at rho for that reaction 
advancement, infinitesimal advancement of their reaction rho. Or again, if we divide by the molar mass of substance gamma, then we have this equation, equation 10. So again, nu gamma rho is just the stoichiometric coefficient of component gamma in the reaction rho. And of course, the rate of reaction rho is just V rho, or the velocity of reaction rho, V rho, is equal to d g rho by dt. So let's now take an example where we have two simultaneous reactions occurring. And these are equations 12 and 13. So in the first equation, equation 12, we have two atoms of carbon plus one molecule of oxygen goes to two molecules of carbon monoxide. And that reaction we associate with the label rho equal to 1. And for the second reaction, we have one atom of carbon plus one molecule of oxygen goes to one molecule of carbon dioxide. And that we label as reaction number 2. Using equation 10 on the previous slide then, we can write the infinitesimal change in the number of moles of carbon atom is just equal to minus 2, which is the stoichiometric coefficient for carbon in the first reaction on the previous slide, times dg1, which is the infinitesimal change or extent of the reaction 1, minus 1 times dg2 minus 1 is again the stoichiometric coefficient of carbon in reaction 2 as we can see on the previous slide. And of course the same thing for the infinitesimal change in the number of moles of the oxygen molecule which is minus dg1 minus dg2. So now you can do the same calculating the same, or writing the same equations, similar equations, for the change in the number of moles of carbon monoxide and of carbon dioxide. Do that as an example. Now it's important to note that not only for chemical reactions, but also for the cases in which we have phase changes. For example, we go from a liquid water to a solid, which is ice, ice water. We can treat that as a chemical reaction and treat the two different uh, types of water or phases of water distinctly as two different chemical components and we'll see that a little bit later on in the course. So what we have studied up to now is the conservation of mass in closed systems where there is no mass allowed to come into the system or to leave the system. Now we're going to consider the case in which we have an open system, which means that mass can flow over the boundary. So, so here we can divide the change in mass of the system into two parts. One, due to the flow over the boundary, which is in equation 17, the E sub indice E m gamma. And another part, which is the changes which are occurring due to chemical reactions inside the system. So that is di sub indice i m gamma. So this is the change of the mass of substance gamma due to the chemical reactions which are occurring inside the system. So we have just divided the system into, well, the flow of the system, the change of mass of the system, into two parts. One due to the flow from the external, the environment, and the other part due to changes which are occurring within the system, internal to the system, which are due to the chemical reactions which are occurring. So from what we have learned on the previous slide, we can re rewrite equation 17 in the form of equation 18, where the second component due to the chemical reactions which are occurring within the system can be written as M, big M, which is the molar mass of substance gamma, times the sum over the different reactions which are occurring, rho goes from 1 to r, different reactions, 
times the stoichiometric coefficient of substance gamma, and uh, for reaction rho times dg rho, which is the extent of reaction rho. And of course, dividing by the molar mass of substance gamma, we can write uh, same equation 19, which is the same as equation 18, but with respect to the change in the number of moles rather than the mass. So now, if we sum equation 17 over the different components gamma, and then using, remember, the stoichiometric coefficient, uh, sorry, the stoichiometric equation, which is uh, this here, sum over gamma, stoichiometric coefficient gamma, reaction rho times the molar mass of substance gamma equal to zero, then we can write equation 17 in this form, which is that the infinitesimal change in the total mass of the system is just equal to the change in the mass which is coming into or out of the system to or from the environment, which is equation 20. So that's just saying that any change in the mass of the system, the total mass of the system, is due to the flow of the matter over the boundary of the system, whether it, whether it is into or out of the system. And so this is just the principle of conservation of mass in open systems. Now, it is important to note that this process of splitting the change of mass of substance gamma into an external part, which is the flow over the boundary, and an internal part, which is due to reactions occurring within the system, can also be performed for whatever other extensive variable or extensive property of the system, for example, the entropy. We'll see that in the next class.